towards the beginning of worship. So I invite you to grab that. You've got just a little bit of time, grab that. If you don't have it yet, get a candle and some matches or a lighter and um, have that ready at the beginning of worship this morning. We're gonna be lighting the candles during the passing of the peace and keeping them lit throughout worship. And if you're joining us on Facebook or YouTube, post a hello, leave a comment, give a heart, give a like, and let each other know that we are worshiping together. All of our services, including our past worship services, are available on Facebook and our church website and on YouTube. So you can find us there under Bismarck United Church of Christ. And we continue to have our 10 a.m. worship services online only right now. However, next Sunday, June 7th at 2 p.m., that's two in the afternoon, you're invited to join us for an in-person um, gathering that's physically distanced time of fellowship and the sacrament of communion. And that'll be right here in our church parking lot. So you're invited to come to that. And there's more details in our June newsletter, which you can find online if you uh, go to uccbismarck.org and to our news and events tab. And you can read our June newsletter there with more details. But now, let us join our hearts and minds in worship on this Pentecost Sunday. We begin all of our worship services by sending peace and blessings to each other and singing a song called No Matter. This morning, Myron and Joyce are leading us in the passing of the peace and as well UCC churches from across the country are going to be joining us. So if you have those candles ready and when Myron and Joyce say peace be with you, say back to them and also with you. Good morning. May peace be with you. And also with you. Greetings. My name is Reverend Sean Williams, and I'm pastor of Lyonsville Congregational United Church of Christ of Indian Head Park, Illinois. The book of Acts tells us that on the day of Pentecost, people gathered from all over the place to celebrate in the same place. But this year, that is not a possibility for us, at least not physically. And so I and a number of my colleagues gathered together virtually to create this Pentecost video for us to celebrate together this year. While we may be physically scattered, we are still united together as Christ's church. 
Congregational United Church of Christ in Arlington Heights, Illinois lights this flame as a part of Christ's Church. The United Church of Christ in Bismarck, North Dakota lights this flame as part of Christ's Church. Church of the Foothills United Church of Christ in Ventura, California lights this flame as a part of Christ's Church. The United Church of Big Rapids, Michigan lights this flame as a part of Christ's Church. Newtown Congregational Church in Newtown, Connecticut lights this flame as part of Christ's Church. Lionsville Congregational UCC of Indian Head Park, Illinois lights this flame as a part of Christ's Church. Plymouth United Church of Christ lights this flame as a part of Christ's church. New Spirit United Church of Christ on Minwakanen, Sioux Dakota indigenous lands in Savage, Minnesota lights this holy flame as a part of the church of Christ. Central Square Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, lights this flame as a part of Christ's Church. Wolcott Congregational Church in Wolcott, Connecticut, lights this flame as a part of Christ's Church. Bethel Bethany UCC in Milwaukee, Wisconsin lights this flame as part of Christ's Church. Raymond Community Church and Union Grove Congregational Church south of Milwaukee, Wisconsin light this flame as a part of Christ's Church. St. Peter's UCC in Millbury, Ohio lights this flame as part of Christ's Church. And now we invite you, all of you who are joining in this time of worship, to light a candle as well, either a physical candle or the flame within. Please join me in this call to worship based on Psalms 104 from the Message Translation. What a wildly wonderful world, God! You made it all with wisdom at your side, made earth overflow with your wonderful creations. Oh look, the deep wide sea, brimming with fish past counting, 
sardines and sharks and salmon. Ships plow those waters and Leviathan, your pet dragon, romps in them. All the creatures look expectantly to you to give them their meals on time. You come and they gather around. You open your hand and they eat from it. If you turned your back, they'd die in a minute. Take back your spirit and they die. Revert to original mud. Send out your spirit and they spring to life. The whole countryside in bloom and blossom. Oh, let me sing to God all my life long. Sing hymns to my God as long as I live. and praise of God. We ask that our Creator be with us as we gather as one community, asking that the Holy Spirit descend on us as it did upon our ancestors so many years ago. And hear our confessions as we practice the act and art of forgiving one another and forgiving ourselves. Please join me in the unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. Great creator of heaven and earth, we humbly come before you with our souls full of all that which has separated us from you and each other. We pray that you will hear the confessions on our lips and that you will open our eyes to see the brokenness to which we cling. We ask for your healing of forgiveness for the ways in which we fall short. Hear our confessions and open our hearts in this time of silence. Almighty God, we give thanks for the assurance of forgiveness as we resolve to live better as a family of God with you and with one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Know and trust in the love of God. This love surrounds you, it washes you clean, it offers you a new beginning every morning. God invites us into the healing power of forgiveness and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is yours. May you know that you are forgiven, may you have the courage to forgive others, and may you have the fortitude to forgive yourself. 
you are proclaimed forgiven and loved. And you are blessed by God's Spirit. This is good news. Let us join in the Gloria. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the Thank you. 
We have a reading from Psalms 104, verses 24 through 34 and 35b. O God, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed <clears throat> to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of God endure forever. May God rejoice in God's works. God who looks on the earth and it trembles. God who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to God as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to God, for in God do I rejoice. Bless God, O my soul. Praise be to God. And a reading from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from other nations under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, as we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall turn to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This ends the reading. Our next scripture reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3b through 13. Hear these words. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the discernment of spirits, 
to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as one, the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For the one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are made to all drink of one Spirit. Here ends our reading. Will you join me in a spirit of prayer? Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for your spirit which has fallen upon us. We give thanks for every breath that we take, every gift that you have helped us to discern, and the gifts which we have yet to discover. We give thanks for your presence upon our lives in every moment. We are transformed by you. Your love guides us, and we pray that this may be so every waking day and every sleeping night of our lives. God, break into our lives. Break in to all the places where there is pain and suffering. Break in to all those places where there is joy and love and fill us with your abundant wisdom, guidance, and peace. Almighty God, we pray that the words of our mouths in the meditations of all of our hearts may be found pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. On this Pentecost Sunday, I want to begin this time of meditation with a quote from Howard Thurman. Howard Thurman said, Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. You've heard this story from Pentecost, this story of the birth of the church. Often on Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate this birthday that is in our midst. We celebrate the birth of the church, and in that, we celebrate our own birthdays the gift of life springing forth, the gift of new beginnings in our midst, the gift of the Holy Spirit, this ever-flowing fountain of even more gifts. It's like the greatest present you could ever get on your birthday, where you had this big box, of, and it, you opened it up, and in it was this Holy Spirit that just kept giving more gifts every single moment, every single day of our lives. That these gifts didn't just come on our birthday. They didn't just come after we had blown out the candles and eaten a piece of cake and we opened these presents and we look inside and we have objects that we can sit on a table and then all the gifts are done giving. No. This birthday gift to the church, this gift which Christ told us about and said, as I leave you, I give to you the Holy Spirit. This is a gift which just keeps giving and giving and giving. There is no end to it. 
For the Holy Spirit is like a rushing wind that filled the whole space. The Holy Spirit is like a great fire that made them speak in all different languages. The Holy Spirit is like a dove descending upon the people, bringing peace and gentleness and kindness. The Holy Spirit is like the rushing waters in which you had your baptism. The Holy Spirit is like those waters which shape the world. These gifts keep giving. They keep transforming, just as the wind keeps picking up leaves and strengthening the plants as it blows over them, just as the waters shape the rocks in the coasts, just as the fires burn out the dead and make space for the new, just as the animals of creation. Remind us that all that we have, all that sustains us, comes from this Mother Earth. This Holy Spirit keeps giving more birthday gifts to us. But what are these gifts? You heard it talked about in 1 Corinthians, the gifts of the Spirit that were given to the people, these so many and varied gifts that came, and the gifts were so varied that they came differently and in different amounts upon each person, transforming their lives and making them beacons of hope and having the ability to transform others' lives. And these gifts of the Spirit have fallen upon you as well. But have you found them yet? Have you discerned them at work in your life yet? Have you found ways to share these gifts with others? Because the thing about the gifts from the Holy Spirit is not only does the Holy Spirit keep giving to us, the Holy Spirit is empowered through us to keep giving to others, and to all of creation. We are a part of the work of the Holy Spirit. We are a part of the continued work from Christ Jesus. We are a part of the work from the beginning of time through the present day. That creative energy and power of God, the blessing and sharing of these gifts, it is part of us and we are a part of it. But it takes some discernment to find them, doesn't it? Or at least to recognize them. Especially when life is changing. Now there's some ways about life that are going back to how it seems it was before. But there's a lot of ways about life that will never go back. Our world is a changing world, as it always has been. We are not in unique times in that. Every day our lives are changing, and it always has been. But now, now we are reminded to look at our gifts of the Holy Spirit and see how is it that these gifts we have discerned, how can they be used anew in the midst of a changing world? All those gifts that the Spirit has blessed with you, how can they be used to bring about justice in this world? All those gifts which God has blessed you with, how can they be used to do the work of love and peace and hope? How are you still a beacon of compassion? How are you still working with the Holy Spirit to remind the world of God's love right here, right now, in the past and in the future to come? How 
how is it that these gifts that are yours, how are you using them in these times? Because God has blessed you. God has blessed you with this life. God has blessed you with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God has blessed you with a calling upon your life. How are you hearing it? How are you using it? How are each of us receiving the Holy Spirit and living fully into these gifts of Pentecost? These birthday gifts that keep giving, these tongues of fire that have fallen upon us, this calling to speak in all different languages to the diversity of people and let all people, no matter what, all people, no matter the color of their skin, no matter their sexual orientation, no matter what they look like, no matter what their economic status is, no matter how their health is, no matter where they live, how are we using the gifts of the Holy Spirit to live as God's love in their lives? Friends, we are called. These gifts from the Holy Spirit, they are meant to be used. And they are beautiful gifts. They will call you and all of us sometimes to hard places. They will call us to walk outside of the places where we are comfortable. They will call us to keep each other safe in ways that we may not like. They will call us to proclaim justice when we'd rather be silent. They will call us to love when we are afraid to love. And it is our gift. It is our privilege. It is our calling to heed that spirit and to be a part of those gifts continuously giving out into creation. Friends, may you discern your gifts anew. May you find ways and see the many ways that the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives. You are a blessing and we are a blessed people. Let us live into these gifts of the Pentecost, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. and places, of all languages and cultures, we confess that we are an arrogant people, a people more inclined to create divisions than to find connections. We do damage to our relationship with you by building up our own self-centeredness, and we do damage to our relationship with others by refusing to see the divine spark of your life in those who look, sound, and act in ways that aren't familiar to us. As we are bombarded with the continued deaths and cries of our black, Latino, and native brothers and sisters in the United States, fill us with the spirit of Pentecost, that we might cry out for justice with words that bring hope to those whose lives are put at risk because of the color of their skin, and with words that reach the hearts and minds of those who cannot understand. Teach us 
to translate your love into places of racial discord, O oh God. As we hear of new political turmoil and broken promises in Hong Kong, fill us with the spirit of Pentecost, that we might speak words that might lead away from violence and towards understanding. Give us prophetic words to speak truth to those who abuse their power wherever they are found. And give us words of comfort for those who suffer at the hands of political oppressors. Teach us to translate your love into places of political discord, O oh God. As same-sex weddings take place in Costa Rica for the first time, and we hear of religious groups lashing out in anger over this legal shift. Fill us with the spirit of Pentecost, that we might speak words of true reconciliation, where the full humanity of one group of your children is not diminished, and the deep theological concerns of another can be addressed. Not with words of disdain and resentment, but with words of healing and transformation. Teach us to translate your love into places of religious discord, O oh God. As our world continues to wrestle with the political, medical, economic, and cultural implications of the COVID-19 pandemic, fill us with the spirit of Pentecost so that we might speak to one another in ways that are respectful of the needs of those around us. Remove from us our inward focus so that we can see the ways we impact other people by the choices we make or refuse to make. Surround us with people who are filled with the spirit of Pentecost so that they might speak words of wisdom to us as we navigate an ever-changing world. Teach us to translate your love into every corner of your beloved world, O oh God, so that the spirit of Pentecost can transform our world from a place of discord and suffering into the image of your kingdom. Hear us now as we pray the prayer taught to us by Christ Jesus, who prayed that we might be made one in your love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, in the power, in the glory, forever and ever. Amen. La declaración de fe de la Iglesia Unida de Cristo. Creemos en Dios el Espíritu Santo, Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo y nuestro Creador. Y de sus obras testificamos. Dios llama los mundos para que existan. Creyó el ser humano a su imagen y su semejanza. Y puso ante la humanidad los caminos de la vida y de la muerte. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. Busca en su santo amor salvar a todas las personas de su desorientación y pecado. Dios juzga 
al ser humano y a las naciones por medio de su justa voluntad declarada a través de los profetas y los apóstoles. En Jesucristo, el hombre de Nazaret, nuestro Señor crucificado y resucitado, Dios ha venido y ha compartido nuestra suerte. Venció el pecado y la muerte y reconcilió al mundo para sí mismo. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. Dios nos concede el Espíritu Santo, que crea y renueva la Iglesia de Jesucristo y une en un pacto de fidelidad a personas de todas las edades, idiomas y razas. Dios nos llama como iglesia para que aceptemos el costo y la alegría del discipulado, para que seamos sus servidores al servicio del ser humano, para proclamar el evangelio a todo el mundo y resistir los poderes del maligno, para compartir el bautismo de Cristo, comer en su mesa y unirnos a Jesús en su pasión y victoria. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant, faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. Dios promete a toda persona que confía en Jesús el perdón de los pecados y la plenitud de su gracia, valor en la lucha por la justicia y la paz, su presencia en las tristezas y las alegrías y la vida eterna en su reino que no tiene fin, bendición, honor y gloria a Dios. Amén. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen.
Friends, may you believe that the Holy Spirit is here, empowering you, filling you with the gifts of the Spirit, even when you do not hear it. God is still speaking in your life. The gifts of Pentecost are still here with you. May you go into the world. May you live each day as a blessing. And may you know God's blessing of love and peace upon your life. May you go as beacons of hope and carriers of peace. Thank you for joining us in worship on this Pentecost Sunday. If this space was renewing to you, please consider donating to Bismarck United Church of Christ at uccbismarck.org forward slash donate or mailing checks in to the church office. Your donations are making a huge difference not only to continuing these online services, but also providing a resource and allowing us to actively live as the church in this changing world. So thank you. Next Sunday, June 7th, we will continue with our online service at 10 a.m., but we will also offer an in-person fellowship and sacrament of communion in the church parking lot at 2 p.m. So if you're in the Bismarck area, come and join us. For more details, you can visit us at uccbismarck.org. And today, after worship, at 11 o'clock, you're invited to join us for online fellowship on Zoom. You can find the link on our website. May you go in peace and have such a blessed week.